Hey guys, and welcome back to Diku Tarot and to your weekly tarot reading and astrology for April 27th through May 2nd of 2020. Last week of April, we're in Taurus season. I have my George Costanza candle here, my Lamb of God Costanza here that I got for my birthday. 2020, it was supposed to be the summer of George. <laughs> So I put that up here um, just for the astrology half. I'll probably take it away when we get into the readings just because I don't want to waste any bit of this. I love this. And I did get it for my birthday this past week. So um, happy birthday to all Tauruses celebrating as well. Um, let's get into your astrology here. If you haven't, do make sure to subscribe. Do make sure to share the videos if you enjoyed it. And check out your readings for your sun, your moon, your rising, and your Venus. If you want to book a private reading, all my info is below. And I am taking 20% off during this pandemic time. And I'll talk a little bit about the astrology um, analysis through Truly Divine and how you can get 30% off at the end, okay? So let's get into this here with the astrology, all right? Monday, April 27th, um, we're starting off the week with the moon in Cancer. <clears throat> You also have Mercury moving into Taurus, which is pretty big here. So that's going to bring about a lot more prudent, methodical, practical thinking and execution. We're going to be a lot more tenacious, unlikely to change our mind and where we're directing our energy at this time. Um, we're going to be taking our time to establish conclusions and judgments with Mercury and Taurus um, because it does bring up this more dogmaticism, this slow, silent processes that are going to be a lot more common in terms of making a decision, changing direction, in terms of, you know, again, where we're directing our energy in um, general here. So judgments formed during this time will probably end up sticking and not changing. On uh, Tuesday, April 28th, we have a couple of things here, mostly small stuff until Wednesday. Um, sun and Taurus sextiling the moon and Cancer, bringing up equality and ability to deal well with all. Um, we're going to be feeling at home and looking um, towards friends and family for any support or help at this time. We also have Mercury and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius, bringing up some more quarrelsome, greedy, and suspicious energies. Um, Wednesday, April 29th, which is going to be pretty big here, we do have Saturn retrograding um, beginning on Capricorn. I feel like I said that super weird. Saturn retrograde begins on Capricorn. All right. I feel like you can't say it right anyway. Um, anyways, delays um, resulting um, in your long-term plans. Um, fear of failure might come up here and this more self-deprecation provoking a lot of self-punishment. So watch out for that while Saturn retrograde, um, Saturn's retrograding in Capricorn at this time. I'm not sure exactly when that ends. For some reason, I didn't write it down. I do apologize. Um, so let's move on now here. We also have the moon in Cancer on that same day opposite Pluto and Capricorn, bringing up more one-sided views of emotions, feeling dejected, and having more um, addictions to pleasure and self-indulgence as a reaction. We also have the moon in Leo opposite Saturn and Aquarius on this day, bringing again this, um, this dissatisfied, introverted, more depressed and, you know, low energy due to perceived restrictions here. Um, so Wednesday could be a little bit, ugh. Um, Thursday, April 30th, we have the moon in Leo squaring Mercury in Taurus here. So spiritual gifts and are going to be in focus here and we're going to be less superficial and hasty. We also have the moon in Leo squaring Uranus in Taurus, um, which is going to bring up eccentric, headstrong, capricious, intense energy here. Could also bring up some derailments of relationships, so watch out for that. We also have Mercury in Taurus conjuncting Uranus in Taurus. So both of them being in Taurus, it's going to make us more progressive, um, unconventional, creative, inventive, and intuitive here. Um, it's going to bring up this more adaptability and agile mindset, which is interesting for all this Taurus energy, but Uranus in Taurus really brings in that opportunity. Opposite. Again, adaptable, um, non-traditional energy. So we're going to be ignoring the traditional here. Um, and that's pretty much all the big stuff going on this week in terms of astrology. So from here forward, we're going to be talking the tarot for the week, all right? All right, Virgos. So Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to be looking with the Hobbit deck here. And we're going to check out what's ooh, coming in for your week ahead. All right. Ooh. This. Okay. Jesus, guys. Ugh. Okay, here we go. All right, so 
Your general theme this week, general focus of the week here, is actually you, the hermit. So you guys are standing in a lot of Virgo energy this week. You could also be taking a lot of time out that you need at this time. Staying, you know, staying away from people. I mean, which is, the Hermit has been a card that has been really bopping around during this whole pandemic situation, which I'm not surprised about. Here we have Bayorn, and he is, you know, known to live on his own. He's the last of his kind, and he's fine with that. He spends a lot of time, um, you know, with animals, you know, taking the time out from regular life to live his own life to stay out in nature we see a little bumblebee there you know he's focusing on what's best for him right now and what he needs to learn and what he needs to do on his own he doesn't worry about what the rest of the world is doing what they're gonna think and who they are this is very self-focused and has you going within and taking the necessary time out um to focus on important aspects of yourself and where you need to grow on what's coming up right now and why okay how you're feeling this week is the Wheel of Fortune, and I, do, again, feel like you guys are kind of sitting back and watching things change this week with the Hermit and the Wheel of Fortune. You guys are feeling the shifts here, and you're ready to take yourselves out of the, you know, the whole situation at this time. You're ready to take a step back to maybe not talk to as much to people, to do your own thing, to do your reading, to just kind of go into Hermit mode here, because you sense that there's major change on the horizon here. As we both know, um, here's the whole, you know, um, all the words on the ring here in Elvish and we have um, Gollum and we have Bilbo together here and they both are on different ends of the wheel here you know he feel like he's on top of it when he has the ring but then you know he's been on the bottom because the ring has actually brought him to the bottom even though he feels like he's on the top in this situation when Bilbo's kind of tricking him he's on top of the ring so we both have you know, power changes, power flux here, things shifting and changing in bigger ways than we can really see at this time. Um, the wheel is ever turning and heralding a lot of change and there's a sense of unfolding fate that you guys see happening pretty positively. So career, it looks really interesting with the seven of cups and then the emperor. You guys are looking at what makes you feel the most empowered and where you're finding the most power and control in terms of work. Seven of cups has you, you know, trying different, uh, you know, ways of going about things. Why do, you know, maybe even looking at different paths in terms of career for some of you. You know, what do I like to do? Why do I like to do it? What can I consider now moving forward? Seven of cups is very exploratory and has you looking at your options, looking in a more fantastical type of future way. And here we have, you know, Bilbo looking for the Arkin Stone and trying to find it here amidst all this treasure. But, you know, he's like, I don't think this is it. But I think the other thing is, so he's looking for it. Um, he's trying to figure out the situation and um, feel his way through this. But, I mean, he has his eyes closed. So you do have to feel your way through this situation is really what I feel here. Um, especially in terms of what's going to make you feel the most empowered, where you'll be getting the most power, and how you can get there. So this is really incredible. The Emperor here shows a lot of power, strength, perseverance, um, and again, taking control in a really impressive way. It's taking authority and mastering your situation, mastering your emotions, mastering, um, you know, with your intelligence, having active realization um, with your ideas and where you want to go. So there's a lot of realization and empowerment there. So search for what makes you feel empowered. Work through this. If you need to look at different ways of going about things and figure out what's most empowering, do so. You will find what makes you feel best. Um, and what keeps you in a better position of authority because Virgos you guys always have this thing where your duty to be very in control especially in terms of career and work um, yeah and we need to make some changes there it's time for a new beginning it's time to let go of the way we were doing things and to make some major changes here death is here to say the end of the way we were doing things is here and a new beginning of how we will do things in this more empowered state is here so do look for better ways of going about things do listen to it feels to me any advice that comes here especially from people that might know better than you at this time some major changes are coming in that are putting you in a much more powerful position, but you have to, again, be willing at, willing to look at and consider all of your options, all of the variables, and your responsibility there, what you need to change, what you need to do, okay? Love and relationship look pretty good. Knight of Wands and the Page of Coins both show up here. They're not, you know, King of Wands, not a King of Coins or Queen or anything like that, but the Knight of Wands is a lot of passion, something exciting to offer, something new coming in here. It's very exciting. For some of you, you might be um, even planning travel or talking to somebody that's kind of far away right now and you're, we're experiencing the beginnings of something, something real. There's definitely communication that is very tete-a-tete. -tete. I always say this one wrong, tete-a-tete. -tete. I feel like every time I try to say it, it 
it's not going to come out right. But there is a real good um, back and forth between you if you're talking to somebody new. There's also a lot of passionate conversations, you know, new lines of thought. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, there's passion coming back in and there's also new ideas of where we want to take a relationship. But be sure to start moving forward on them, to not be stubborn and to not to hold too hard on um, to things that haven't been working, to not be too stubborn, to not be... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? To not procrastinate in terms of love. You know, communicate, move quickly, feel that flow. Okay, so that's really what I get there in terms of love. And um, there is something real to plant, but again, we have that essence of earth there. So there's real stability and security. There's something really solid there, but we can't just be, you know, flirting and doing all this other stuff. It's nice, but we also have to bring that more solid grounded energy in here if we want it to grow, want it to go somewhere, okay? Could also be dealing with a fire sign like an Aries, a Sag, or a um, Taurus, Virgo, or even a Capricorn, okay? Ace of Cups is your advice this week. Communicate with your heart. Follow your heart. There's new beginnings in your emotions and in your heart. And there's this also, you know, this rejuvenating energy here when you get the Ace of Cups. It's, you know, the essence of beauty, the essence of water, that beginning card, that big offer here. That's like, do you want this? Hell yeah, you want this. It looks great, doesn't it? It's beautiful. So... There's a lot of wealthiness, a lot of wealth there um, in terms of your joy, in terms of your love, in terms of your fer fertility, in terms of all this beautiful energy here. And the Ace of Cups is kind of like that falling in love energy. Like, do you want love again? Go for it. Do you want to feel emotionally, you know, charged by something, you know, that you really enjoy, a new creative endeavor, something new that you really want and that you're going to go for with your heart? We could have new goals um, coming up here in terms of, you know, where we want to see things go in many areas of life here at this time and that's why you know we're going within and we're seeking out this change we know that there's massive changes coming in here with all these kinds of cards showing up we have some very powerful cards here that show you taking authority making the necessary changes because you've been watching waiting and have kind of worked your way through this we, we know change is here and we're ready for it we're ready to follow our heart we're ready to follow something that's a lot more emotionally fulfilling to us at this time okay so let's pull a couple of um, cards here, a couple of oracles. Romance Angel, let's pull one of those for you. Ooh, we get Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world, and I definitely feel this for you guys this week. If you find that you're being really quarrelsome and difficult within a relationship and you don't want to deal with things, um, take a retreat. Take a step back. When you find yourself getting frustrated for no reason or because of your own things, you know, take a step back. Maybe talk to them about it if you feel you can do that without attacking them or without coming across as harsh, okay? Um, but retreat says taking a step back within a relationship. It also involves maybe you guys planning a retreat because you want to reconnect. Maybe we want to disconnect together, take a day for ourselves, do a little mini stay-at-home vacation or plan a vacation for the future, okay? Let's look with a Stacey DeMarco here. Advice and guidance from your higher self. Ooh, Virgo. So what do we get here? Lamp, remembrance. And whenever I get this card, things might seem kind of misty, but things, again, are in this state of change. And the only way to kind of figure out which of these cups is right, you know, figure yourself out through this mist, is to trust that, you know, we have to keep following this light, keep following our light. And the only way to do that is to go within and really seek out what that is to us at this time, okay? So that's really what I get here. And I love the way the tarot supports this message, the lamp. It has a different message as well in the book, which I'll read, but that's what it is for me is things might seem misty, confusing, strange at this time, but it has you, you know, again, continuing to follow that lamp, to follow your light, to follow your path here and know that wherever you're going, it is headed somewhere. It's not I'm just not going to lead you anywhere. Just it might not seem very solid and you might not really know what's going on right now. Anyways, the lamp, remembrance. <clears throat> both as a symbol of remembrance and also as a kind of leaving the lights on for those who may wish to come home the lamp was left on to illuminate the night and perhaps even the sadness that was felt because of a passing this card also reminds us that it is a positive thing to remember those who have passed by celebrating their life rather than mourning their death for those with whom we did not have an easy relationship or even those we did not like leave us with valuable lessons sometimes we learn more from our nemesis than we do from our friends and so the darkness can illuminate our strengths and our values so that we can live them more clearly and fully. So beautiful, beautiful messages for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, Virgo. Have a wonderful and blessed week. 
And thank you guys so much for all of your support. Do make sure to subscribe, share the video. Um, if you want to book a private reading, guys, all of that information is always right below in my description box. And again, I'm taking 20% off of all of my readings right now um, just to help out during this whole pandemic global situation. Um, do check out Truly Divine. They are an incredible astrology and numerology service. They do analysis just for yourself, for your life path number. They also do compatibility analysis for numerology as well as um, astrology and the astrology one was just like I mean they were both incredible but I am still I still am going back and reading it I started rereading my own astrology analysis this past week again and it's just incredible so do check them out guys you can get 30% off with my code DQ30 you can use it as many times as you want you don't just have to use it once you can give it to as many friends they can use it so do take advantage of that they are the best astrology and numerology analysis system I have ever used and I get readings and I've had analysis done by people in person for astrology and numerology and they just blow them all out of the water so definitely check out their services. I'm really impressed by them and I'm really happy I get to work with them. So check that out guys. Make sure to subscribe and um, have a wonderful and blessed week. Alrighty. Namaste.